may be seated. <clears throat> well, welcome church. Week three of Pray Through May. And it's the journey that we're on to discover the heartbeat of KBC when it comes to prayer. And I'm going to have, have to ask someone to bring me some water up because this has been a busy morning and I totally forgot about the water part. I can go get it, but I have to preach too. So, yeah, yeah. So, you, you make a choice. Thanks. I appreciate that. So welcome to this week of prayer, which is a, a unique week because it's something for me that I've needed to learn, the idea of how else God speaks to us. Often growing up, we understand that our main conversations with God appear, you know, at our foot, uh, at the bed of, or at the foot of our bed when we're praying at night or at the dinner table when we're asking blessing upon food. When we're talking to God is when prayer primarily happens. But one of the discoveries that we need to make is to understand that God does not just speak to us when we speak to him, that God is always in conversation with us in many different aspects of life. God reveals himself in so many different ways. And one of the verses that came up in the Bible app this week is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. And it says these words, I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And the key word here is revelation. The idea that God wants to reveal himself in so many different ways other than just those times when we say, okay, God, I'm going to have a time of prayer right now. And as we know, often those times of prayer look like a conversation, like a one-way phone call. We've all known the, the, the person that is able to consume a phone conversation and all you're able to get in is the yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no, okay, well, or oh, yeah. And I sometimes feel that that's the way God is with us in our prayer time. Like he can't get a word in edgewise. So I really believe that God uses different ways of communicating with us. And one of those ways is dreams and visions. As a kid growing up, I always had this constant nightmare. I don't know how many people in this room had the same consistent nightmare where you just can't wait to wake up from. Mine was particularly a black bear breaking into our house and, and, and having to hide somewhere in my house from this black bear. It wasn't just once or twice that I had these dreams. It was consistent as a kid. I always had these dreams about a black bear breaking into our house. Can you think back to some of those dreams, or maybe they still happen now, were those dreams that you just wish didn't happen all the time, but they continually do? We've had, all had those dreams that either wake us up sweating, wishing that we didn't have the dream, and then there's other dreams that we're wishing that we're able to go back to sleep because we're enjoying the experience. You know those dreams I'm talking about when you wake up and you go, oh, man, not just because you've woken up, but because you want to know how the rest of the dream ends. And you force yourself back to sleep just wanting to know how the story ends. And then there's the dreams that are like, man, if I could just tell Steven Spielberg this dream, he would totally write a movie that would be totally awesome. It would be a blockbuster. Have you ever had those dreams? Yeah. Then there's the sad dreams, the nightmares, but then there's the happy dreams and the daydreams and the pinch me, I'm dreaming events. There's just unique parts and different aspects. And today I want to discover the idea that God also wants to speak to us in those dreams. And that maybe some of those dreams that you've had in the past and continue to have today are actually God having conversation with you because it's that only time of the entire week that you actually don't, aren't busy. Like we're sleeping, God has our full attention. God has like that eight hours of time to just grab hold of your spirit and your soul and speak to you. So both visions and dreams. And if we look at these, both these visions and dreams, we have to understand that visions and dreams are real. They're undeniable. We all know what they are. And we've all had some of those awoken visions, those visions where we kind of see something. You know, there's been people that have seen Jesus in toast, right? Or Jesus on a brick wall, those visions of, the, of those. But then there's the real visions. And particularly, I 
texting my dad this week because he has this one story. We used to live in Cold Lake, Alberta, which is about 48 hours away from here. And we would, almost twice a year as a family, get in our little car and we would drive that entire distance home to Woodstock, New Brunswick. 48 hours in a car and all I had was the bumper plate game. You know what I'm talking about, right? The bumper plate game, right? We had to make up really long sentences to fill in the entire 48 hours. Like when you saw a letter of your name, you would, you would place that letter. And you would win if, if you saw all the letters. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Well, of course, there was periods during that 48-hour journey that dad would get relatively tired. He was finally thankful when my 16-year-old brother at the time, Brent, was able to get his driver's license and take over some of the driving from both mom and dad. So 48 hours was kind of split up. But dad, before all of that time, would just drive. He would just drive, and we'd all be sleeping in the back, and he would just drive. And I remember this one story he talked about where he was getting pretty groggy, and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to continue staying awake. And I remember him telling the story, and I asked him to reiterate the story through text. And this is the story that he shared. And this, I believe, changed the trajectory of our family's spiritual life. It was very late or early morning around Hearst, Ontario. It was quiet, and all the family was sleeping as I drove through the night. I remember how cold it was outside and was thankful for the warm car. As I drove along, I looked out my window, and there in the glass was a reflection of what my mind knew as Jesus. I looked away and thought it was in my mind and just a reflection from the car, but I had to find out. So I looked again. And sure enough, he was still there. Great, I got Jesus riding with me. How good is that? I continued to check out the window, and he continued with us. It was a warm feeling, and I knew nothing would go wrong with my new passenger. I settled in and drove. I checked one more time, and he was gone. I felt sad yet happy to have the privilege of riding for a short time with Jesus. I'd since checked my window through my life and have never seen that image again. I often pray before we start a trip to get Jesus to protect us as we travel this time. He must. I love that story. It's it's a story for me is of protection of our family. And that vision that dad had for me is reality. I don't know what you thought when you read that story, whether dad had too much caffeine in his system, maybe that's the way you might think through those, those conversations. But I really believe that God uses these key moments in our time to remind him of us of his reality and his presence in our lives. And a lot of us in this room have probably had those visions and dreams. And then there's the dreams that just come from eating too much popcorn at night and watching a little bit too late of Netflix. You know, you get those dreams. Science which suggests that eating things late at night, particularly cheese, before bad, uh, bed leads to these, some of these dreams because metabolism kicks in and we begin to have these vivid dreams but also lucid dreams. There is a separation between both vivid and lucid dreams. Lucids are the ones that keep you up at night, that you just can't get a deep night's sleep. Those lucid dreams are the ones that just continue to flow through your mind because you're thinking way too much. Particularly, again, because you might have eaten something late at night that you shouldn't have or maybe regretted. But then there's the vivid dreams. You know which ones I'm talking about, those ones that you're just deep in sleep, where you're probably in REM mode, the, 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 the late night, where you just have a fantastic night's sleep. But there's this one dream that you remember. There's this one conversation you might have had or this one event that might have happened. You know what dreams I'm talking about, right? Where you wake up and you just wish you can remember the dream, and you do remember quite a bit of it. And so today what I want to do is lock into how do we unlock hearing God in those stories because we want to focus on those vivid dreams. See, lucid dreams are typical, again, of the restless dreams, but these lucid or these vivid dreams are important for us to understand. There's this one particular story I want to read, and it's a story that's very popular I'm not saying this particular story is popular, but these stories are very popular. This one gentleman recounts, I looked at the sky and said, you know what? You are so big for me. This is a conversation he's having with with God, and I cannot find you. Please do something. 
I'm too small for you. Just do something and find me. It's not hard for you if you are there. This gentleman's begging for God. And then as he goes to sleep, he recounts his dreams, this encounter with Jesus. He says, that night he saw Jesus in his dream. In my dreams, I saw that I'm running on a very long road, a lot of tree branches full of thorns chasing me. They want to kill me. At the end of the road, there's this man I do not recognize, and I shouted, please help me do something. He just extended his hand, put his hand on my shoulder, and brought me before him. Once he looked at me, I found out that this is Jesus Christ. He looked deep into my eyes and said, it's your time to follow me. He thought it was just a hallucination, but the next night he dreamed the exact same dream again. For three consecutive nights, he encountered Jesus in his dreams. That's when he realized that Jesus Christ was more than a prophet, that he was not, uh, that he was not who he had been told Jesus was. Three years after he encountered Jesus, Kareem got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. From that day on, his life has, le- has never been the same again. God healed me, and I can say that I love you. I love you, God. God is love, and he put love in our hearts. Kareem is from the Middle East, and Kareem is just one of thousands of Middle Eastern people who have never encountered Jesus, yet through this dream, they encountered him in special ways. These dreams are impacting the Middle East in big ways. Jesus is is alive in that area of the world and using dreams to speak to people. And dreams have been a a method of God speaking to people all the way through the Bible. Abimelech, Jacob and Laban, Joseph, Pharaoh's butler and and baker, if you remember the story, Pharaoh himself, the Midianite, Solomon, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel. And then there's Jesus' dad, Joseph, who again in a dream was revealed that he would become Jesus' father. There was the wise men, and also Pilate's wife, when Pilate was going through the agony of deciding what to do with Jesus, his wife explained to him that she had a dream about Jesus himself. In Genesis, during the early patriarchal period, there's um, this understanding that dreams were one of the main methods that God spoke to people. The book of Daniel would be another illustration of that. In reality, however, there are 14 specific dreams that are recorded in the Old Testament that directly impact the entire story of the Bible. The word onar is is what the Hebrew word for dream, and it is the major form of communication. When you actually use the word onar, it was how God spoke to you at night. That's what dream was. It's how God spoke to you. Last week, we talked about Job himself. Job, in Job chapter 33, verse 15, had a vision of the night. That place when deep sleep falls on people and they slumber in the bed, that's the dreaming time. Again, in the Old Testament, it was communication from God to make something known, which may include both verbal and rational communication as well as images. He uses dreams. And visions and dreams are two of the ways that God gets our attention. And we need to find ways to lean into them. This is not about a dream for the future. This is about a dream that can impact your future. I want to say that again. This is not about a dream for the future. This is a dream that can impact your future. It's very interesting this past week when I was preparing this. I went to bed on Tuesday night and I had this vivid dream. Like literally one of those dreams. And it's been a little bit since I've had a vivid dream. But I had no doubt in my mind that God was communicating to me. And he was communicating to me about a particular person in the church. And through that dream, as I woke up and explained the dream to my wife, I just knew, and it got right on my phone, and I said, how are things going? Can I, how can I be praying for you? I used that moment to, to recount the dream and say, hey, can I bring you a coffee so we can chat? And we did. And I believe these are key steps in us hearing from God. And the more we hear the dreams and make use of the dreams, 
the more God will speak to us in the dreams. So you may be asking, well, Pastor Brian, well, what does this mean? How do I do this? How, do, how will this impact my life? And so I want to give you some steps towards recounting some of your dreams and hearing God through them. The step one is, is very easy to understand. If you want dreams, if you want God to speak to you in your dreams, you need to first ask God to speak to you in a dream. You really have to say, God, as I go to sleep tonight, I would love to hear from you. If you want to receive a dream from the Lord, simply ask him. If you ask, he will answer as it says in Scripture. Jesus recounts, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if he asks a son for bread, will, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So step one, very clear. Ask. And God will give. Now, if you ask, step two is a no-brainer. Expect to receive. Expect to receive. If you ask for a dream, do so with the expectation that God will answer that dream or answer you in that dream. Remember to be specific in what you ask so God will be able to answer you. Step three, be still when you first awaken. I think one of the key things is uh, for us in today's North American rust world is we like to try to get as much sleep as possible, and the snooze button is a pretty popular uh, button on the, on the iPhone. I know that particularly well in our household, that the snooze button is hit more times than once. But the key here is to be still, to plan a moment in your morning where you just pause and don't think of anything else, don't do anything else. Because sometimes when we have dreams and we jump out of bed so quickly, we don't remember them. When we do first wake up, wait to see if you're remembering anything. If you do, ask God if it was from him. If peace fills your heart, know that that dream is from him. We need to be aware of the enemy's counterfeits that come to torment us. Generally speaking, if a dream fills you with fear, anxiety, hopelessness, it's probably not from God. However, sometimes there are warning dreams, and we'll hear about those in just a second, but what we have to understand is that God does speak to us in different, different types of dreams. Some dreams may be troubling, but when you begin to intercede and get further instruction from God, hope will flood your being, and a supernatural peace will come. I used to have these types of dreams, these dreams would fill me, and these dreams would be like almost a type of dream where I say, I got to be aware of this type of situation in my life. Throughout this month, I've asked different people to share about their understanding of these different topics. And so today, I'm asking Marilyn if she would come and share with me, because she shared with me several times about these particular types of dreams that she's had and that she wants to make us aware of. So Marilyn, you can come and share now about these types of dreams. Again, step three is important to be still when you first awaken and hear what God is trying to say to you. Thank you, Brian. I just wanted to share with you a couple of events that happened in my life. And these two events that I chose um, were a few years apart. The first one is was a dream that I had. God showed me a warning, and in the morning, in that warning, the house had flames coming out of it on one side. So I prayed for protection for ourselves and for the our home. So I knew something was going to cause a fire in the house. So my husband and I checked the house to see if we could find anything. And we didn't see anything. And so a few days later, at dinner time, I heard a snapping sound. And I followed her down to the utility room, and sparks were coming out around the pressure switch for the pump. So my husband used the fire extinguisher to put out the spark that by this time had become a flame. So in this 
dream, God has showed the warning of a house fire. So God's protection is very real. And I wanted us to read together uh, Psalm 91, verse 14. Would you all read that with me, please? Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. So God is always with us. Now, the second event, God showed me in a dream in the middle of the night that my husband would be injured at work. So I immediately got up, and this was about 3, p- 3 a.m. I got up to pray, and for the next two hours, I prayed for my husband. Then I remembered that he usually has a co-worker with him or close by. So I then included his co-workers. Now, at 7.30 in the morning, I also called the church prayer coordinator for more prayer support, and I just couldn't wait any longer. I felt 7.30 was probably too late, but I called, didn't want to wake anybody up. But anyways, I made that call. So when my husband came home from work, he said his co-worker had a near miss of being injured, and he had arrived at his work area in time to see this near miss for himself. So God answered the need for protection through the power of prayer and scripture. So let's read together Psalm 91, verses 2 to 4 for this event. I'll say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. So I just wanted to add, dreams have many purposes. You may have a good dream, a bad dream. You may have a message in a dream. You may have a warning. In my case, I had warnings on these two occasions. So there is a need to identify where the dream is originating. Is it from God? Is it from uh, the Holy Spirit? Is it an evil spirit? Or is it your spirit? A bad dream can originate from your spirit. If, you're, if you worry or are fearful, you can create in your spirit anxiety, which will manifest itself into dreams. Instead of being anxious all day about your dreams, go to prayer. We'd sit quietly with Jesus and talk to him about your dreams. And be sure to journal your dreams, because then you can look back and see how God has been at work in your life. Will you ask for protection for yourself and whoever was in the dream? Will you ask Jesus to help you have a better attitude or the right perspective about a situation? Will you read the Bible so it can give you the understanding, the wisdom, and the insight that you need and for peace of mind? In prayer, we talk to God, and we thank him for showing us the direction to go or the decision we need to make. Just remember, prayer is an action that tells us Jesus is very real and that we trust in him. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Again, those are the important parts of us to be aware that God is speaking to us particularly in what we understand as warning dreams. So to hear these dreams, again, you must be first still when you first awaken and begin to ask God, was that you speaking to me last night? Step four is important too. You need to write down the details of a dream and date it. Dreams are not necessarily to be taken literally. They often possess spiritual and metaphoric revelation that unfolds to you over time. Dreams of Jesus are usually very vivid and in detail. If you don't write it down, you won't be able to remember the details later when the revelation comes, and particularly comes again as a reminder. So write it down. And step five is to pray for understanding and interpretation of the dreams. Every dream has a different interpretation. As you begin to decipher the dream. Some dreams are literal, some are spiritual. Others have literal and spiritual meaning. Dreams are often symbolic. 
but you don't want to be led away by the interpretation. That is why God asks you or tells you these dreams, not necessarily so you can fully interpret them, but that you can begin to discover what God is trying to say. He will either reveal to you in, in, in exact ways that he wants you to act, or he will just begin to give you some subtle understandings of who he is. We aren't able to go into depth about how to interpret a dream in this writing, but it's important that you begin to ask God ways to interpret your dreams. But be patient with him and wait on him. And never rely on a dream as a sole source for a major decision. We are still human. We still have a difficult time understanding God. And for us, we have to be very cautious about using a dream to direct any major decisions in your life. A dream from God will never contradict what the Bible says about God. His written word always supersedes a dream. But dreams are important. And they are often a word to encourage us or warn us or direct us, or give us hope. If your dream is not one of these, then be on guard. But the key here is to understand that God does speak to us in dreams. I've always thought to myself, when it comes to conversations with God, what are some things that I need to expect from God when I pray? 1 Kings chapter 3, we see the story of Solomon, and I'll close off with this story because I think this is an important story for us to understand. 1 Kings chapter 3 is the story of Solomon where he's made king, and this conversation has often been understood by me as a conversation that Solomon has with God just in regular prayer. But this is not the case. In a dream... God spoke to Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and you and, and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your ser servant a discernment discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern the great people of yours. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked him for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and, and, administra and in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that you will never have been, have been anyone like, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for but riches and honors so that in your lifetime you have no equal among kings. If, you're, if you walk in my ways and obey my statutes and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then... Solomon awoke, and he realized it was a dream. Two options when it comes to dreams. Believe God is in the dream, or believe it's just some sort of chemical reaction that happens within your brain that just has got the, nothing to do with the Almighty at all. Those are two choices. I choose to believe that God is trying to speak to us and communicate us to us when we're at our most susceptible and quietest position. So, 
the instruction from this is begin to ask God for these dreams and begin to see how God will speak to you in the stillness of the night. Let me pray for you as we close off and sing one last song. Father, thank you that you do speak to us in dreams. And thank you that you have spoken to us in dreams. And sometimes we have understood these as conversations with you, and some of us have just um, ignored them somewhat, just considered them just basic dreams. So God, as we go from this moment, God, I pray that you're able to give us a stillness of mind and stillness of heart when we wake up in the morning from these dreams and begin to see how you've been speaking to us and begin to grow us through this one more way to pray through May. In Jesus' name. Right. You're going to join us, right? Oh, sure.